Some of the smartest cars on the road are often accused of making some of the dumbest mistakes. We're talking about driverless cars. And while we've mostly heard about them being used to shuttle passengers, the same kind of technology being rolled out in other ways that promise to deliver convenience without a lot of headaches we've seen with robo taxis. Senior investigative reporter Bagat Japan explains. When it comes to navigating the streets of San Francisco, one of the major roadblocks for driverless cars has been the cars themselves, literally. They've stopped in the middle of the road for seemingly no reason, sometimes abruptly hitting the brakes and city buses. A self-driving car where I mean no driver. They've blocked emergency vehicles and even swerved right into wet cement. GM's Cruise and Google's sister company, Waymo, have some of the largest driverless fleets in America and hope to surpass Uber and Lyft as the next generation of ride-hailing taxis. While both companies acknowledge their technology isn't perfect, they say the vast majority of their rides go smoothly, adding that their own research has found their self-driving cars are in some ways safer than human drivers. But despite all the attention on robo-taxis, transportation experts tell us driverless technology is actually likely to expand faster and farther when it's used to transport goods instead of passengers. This technology is challenging. Berkeley research engineer Stephen Schladover has been studying self-driving cars for 50 years. The systems can actually be designed to be more cautious drivers than they would be if they were carrying passengers. If the vehicle needs to slow down or needs to be deferential to other road users, there's nobody sitting in that vehicle who's getting impatient because they're not getting to their destination in time. Which brings us to the new age of door-to-door -door delivery. The company Neuro has already deployed its self-driving cars to California, Texas, and Arizona for pilot programs where the robocars have delivered food and goods for companies including Walmart, Uber Eats, and Domino's. Almost half of the daily trips taken by Americans are for these local errands that we have to run. Have our robot do your errands for you. Dr. Andrew Clare is chief technology officer for Neuro and invited us into the company's Silicon Valley headquarters to check out how their cars work. Once one arrives at your home, a pin is sent to your phone to unlock your delivery. Please enter your four-digit passcode. And there it is. There it is. Claire says convenience isn't the only thing fueling the technology. He says Neuro's cars are also delivering safety by reducing traffic-related injuries and deaths. The safest trip is a trip that you never had to take in the first place, where you have this vehicle go and get uh, your groceries or your pizza or your laundry for you and bring it back to your home. Neuro's robocars first hit the streets in the Bay Area more than three years ago. Today, there are about 50 in California, but the delivery service has only logged several thousand miles on the road without a human in the car. Waymo and Cruz have each driven roughly 5 million driverless miles and have been in dozens of crashes over the past three years, according to the DMV. Many of them appear to be the fault of other drivers, like when this person ran a red light. But over that same time period, state and federal transportation records show that while in self-driving mode, Neuro's cars haven't been involved in a single accident across the state. What do you credit that to? From the vehicle design uh, to our software design, safety is our number one priority. Big rigs are also speeding ahead with driverless tech. Trucking is a $940 billion industry in the U.S. with more than 13 million trucks that largely rely on highway driving, which is typically more predictable and less complicated than city streets. But the trucking industry is down drivers with a shortage of more than 78,000 which is only expected to double over the next decade. The driving population is really aging rapidly, so they're going to age out and they can't find new drivers. One potential solution is putting robots in control, which would also mean fewer pit stops, so trucks can be on the road longer and follow one another more closely, since you can sync driving between different trucks. It's called platooning, and it can dramatically improve gas mileage since there's less wind resistance. Autonomous big rigs are still largely in the testing phase, but the company Too Simple already has driverless trucks on the road in Arizona and China. Imagine a world where you have self-driving trucks um, that can operate 20 hours a day, basically increase freight capacity 
at a fraction of the price of which today's trucks are being operated. Cheng Lu is Too Simple's CEO and says cutting gas and human labor means trucking companies could reduce their budgets by 40 percent. And cheaper transportation could mean cheaper goods for consumers. That would considerably reduce costs. Robot trucks have got to go, hey, hey! But not so fast, says Jason Rabinowitz, a leader with the Teamsters, the nation's largest trucking union. Sign that bill! More than a thousand members recently marched to California state capitol there you go, talk to, to support a bill that would require driverless trucks weighing more than 10,000 pounds to always have human safety drivers inside. The Teamsters represent tens of thousands of truck drivers across California and worry autonomous tech could drive away their jobs. Should that be enough of a reason to steer clear of new technology? We welcome new technology. We want to make sure it's safe. It's about jobs, but it's also about safety. You want someone in the cab that could take over if needed? Absolutely. You could have even bigger disasters than we've had with the robot cars just because of the bigger size, scope, and, and weight and speed of these vehicles. The threat to our safety is enormous. The bill mandating human supervision inside self-driving trucks got bipartisan support in the legislature, but Governor Newsom vetoed it calling it unnecessary, since current laws already allow the state to create the appropriate regulatory framework. Right now, self-driving trucks aren't even allowed on the road in California because the DMV is yet to release guidelines on how they should operate. Once they do, the first phase of testing is likely going to require humans to ride along. But eventually, California's highways could be lined with big rigs that have no one behind the wheel. With the investigative unit, I'm Begat Chaban. Well, Begat has been seeing on top of all the latest developments with driverless cars. He recently took viewers along for a ride in a robo-taxi. He did, and see what happened on the streets of San Francisco wild. that had Begad and a driving instructor calling for human intervention. Just head to NBCBayArea.com, click on Investigations.